Good morning. Good morning. It is Friday, December 16th, 2022. Good morning. Good morning. I hope you have your coffee with you. I have my winter cup. And yes, so as you are all coming in, good morning, Karen. Good morning. Uh, the snow has let up and it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. Good morning, Brenda. Good morning. So good. So good to have all of you, all of y'all with me this morning. Yes, whether you are joining first thing in the morning or sometime this afternoon or this evening. Good morning, Shane. Good morning. Yes, so good morning and happy Friday, Rob. Yes, and good morning, Elizabeth. Yes, you all might have been looking for uh, the notification. You're like, where is she this morning? Yep, I'm here. Uh, good morning, Daphne, and good morning, Tanya. So glad that you joined us. So, uh, good morning, Sandy. It's good to see you. Good to see you, Colette. So, this morning I got up and I went for a walk, and this, I was hoping that the sidewalk clearers had already gone through. Good morning, Donna. And they hadn't. And so, you're like walking through this snow covered snow sidewalk. And I'm like, oh. This is awkward. This is hard. It reminded me of like running in sand, um, where it's just really awkward and hard. And I'm like, is this really worth it? And I'm like, okay, like just, just keep walking, right? Just keep walking. Just keep walking. And so I'm, I'm trudging through the snow, and then I hop over onto the road, which is all cleared off, and I walk on it for a while. And then I get to the main street and I'm like, well, I can't walk on the main street. I'll have to walk through the snow again, right? And so it was this constant back and forth of really hard slugging and wetness. <laughs> There's a lot of wetness going on this morning because um, as, cause it's warm, right? So the snow is melting and there's slush and my feet are wet. And I'm like, oh, this is just so uncomfortable. But in the midst of that, I got to wave to someone and I got to move out of the way of a snowplow going through in a good way, like just like making space for him. And I had these little opportunities uh, for joy and, um, and I thought, hmm, I wouldn't have gotten to experience that if I hadn't walked through the slush and the muck and the snow. And it, just is kind of reflective of where I am right now and, and I titled uh, this today's uh, Devo grief because that's exactly how it feels it feels like it's slow going sometimes and other days or other even moments it's easy right I'm walking on the pavement it's nice and clear and it's good um, and you have these moments of, of joy um, where you get to connect with people or God just speaks into your spirit and and that's kind of what grief is like. And uh, when people ask me how am I doing, I'm sad. But sometimes I'm happy. <laughs> sometimes I'm full of joy. Uh, it all depends on the moment that you catch me at. Um, and so one of the things that um, I'm starting to realize is that this will pass. Uh, there's this beautiful passage in Ecclesiastes. It's, uh, it's Ecclesiastes 3 and it says there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to uproot a time to kill and a time to heal a time to tear down and a time to build a time to weep and a time to laugh a time to mourn and a time to dance there's a time for everything and right now um, I'm I'm experiencing a little bit about all of that, right? But there is this time to mourn, and there is this time to, to cry, and there is this time to, to dance and be full of life. There is a time for everything. And uh, as Brenda is saying, grief is a gift for loving, right? It's, it's the result of having a good relationship or a relationship and maybe grief is the result of not resolving things and you need to take time right time to resolve and so grief is this time where we actually can do an audit on relationships and maybe uh, there's something that we need to repent of 
in that relationship and you're thinking, yeah, but what if they've already passed away? You can still write a letter and Lord, would you forgive me for how I treated that person? My words, my actions, my deeds. You can write a letter to that person just saying, I'm so sorry for what I, I did. And so grief is this gift that we are given that we can audit relationships. And so there is a time for everything. There's a time for everything. And uh, also in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says the Lord makes everything beautiful in its time. And so even in the midst of our grief, sadness, like the Lord can take that and he can make something very beautiful come out of it if we would just give it to him. And, and that reminded me of another passage in the book of uh, Coloss or First Corinthians, where it says that the God of our comfort, uh, the God of all comfort, comforts us in our tribulations. Like he actually, the Lord is near. It says the, in Psalms, it says the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Uh, he saves those who are crushed in spirit. So the Lord actually meets us in the midst of our grief, in the midst of our trials and tribulations. It says he meets us there and he comforts us. And he often does that um, through kindness of other people, saying, you know, kind words, praying for us, bringing us meals, um, uh, a card in the mail, uh, a text just to check in. Um, that's often how the Lord comforts us, or it could be in the quiet of the room where we just close the door and allow him to speak to us. But he does comfort us. So not only does he, he take the situation and he can, he can bring something beautiful out of it because of his sovereignty and goodness, but he's also close to us. He doesn't leave us in the midst of our grief. It says he is near right? He's near. And uh, not only can he make something beautiful, not only is he near, he actually mourns with us. Uh, when Mary and Martha found Jesus and said, do you not care that our, about us? Like, do you not care that our brother has died? Like, where were you? And as they go and go towards the tomb of where Lazarus is dead, has been buried, um, Jesus actually weeps. He, right? Kids, they often say, I, I, have, I have this verse memorized, shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. And he wept because he was brokenhearted for the loss of Lazarus for Mary and Martha. And so he himself models mourning with those who mourn. So we have this wonderful heavenly father who in the midst of our broken world meets with us. He makes all things beautiful and he grieves with us. He grieves with us. And uh, I have misplaced a mitten <laughs> that my mom, uh, she gave me uh, a a toque and a, a neck thing and mittens a few years ago. And I'm just like, oh, mom, right? I don't need these. I have so many of these. And little did I know that they would um, become my favorite mitten and hat set just because they fit so nicely and they're warm. And I've misplaced one of those mittens. And so I was, <laughs> two weeks ago, I was crying over broken glasses. This morning, I was crying over a lost mitten. And the thing is, I know that the Lord met me in that because I experienced his peace and comfort in my spirit. And so the Lord, right? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He saves those who are crushed in spirit. And then there's the wonderful passage in Revelation where it says, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eye. There'll be no more grief or mourning or crying or pain, <sighs> right? So there will come a day when there will be no more mourning because we'll be reunited with God. And what good, good news that is. But while we are here, there will be, right? 
God, Jesus said, in this world you will have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. He makes all things beautiful, right, in their time. Secondly, he's close to the brokenhearted. Thirdly, he mourns with us. And fourthly, full circle once again, right? He's going to make everything new. He's going to make everything new, and there will be no more crying or mourning or pain. That's a good God. That in the midst of this very broken world, he meets with us. He holds us. He provides for us. He cares for us. Yes. Yes, this is good news. So I want to encourage that. Uh, I want to encourage you with this today. That this is very good news. And you might be going through a season of, I want to say, more intense grief. Like, mine's very immediate, right? Mom passed away on the 28th of November. And today's the 16th of December. Not quite a month. But you might be a few years in. You might be a decade in. And something triggers right that memory and you feel the tears come up you feel the ache in your heart I want you to the best thing you can do is acknowledge it I am I am sad because I have lost a mitten and it reminds me of my mom or I am sad of whatever or my heart is aching because I'm missing my father I had a gentleman um, come to me in the wake right and once again if there's a wake just go to it encourage the person uh, he said because I talked about you know calling mom and he said yeah dad's been gone for seven or eight years now and that feeling never goes away and so don't say I just have to get through this I have to get over it allow God to meet you there and give those things to him give thanks that for whatever it is that you're experiencing and then allow God to actually do with it as he wants to do with it, right? Because remember, he's working all these things together for good. So we have to, in the midst of our grief, give those things over to him, even if it's fresh like mine or it seems to have taken on a new life years later. The Lord, the Lord's going to make everything beautiful. The Lord is near. He mourns with us, right? He comforts us. The God of all comfort comforts us and mourns with us. And then he's going to make everything new with no more tears. That's good news. Let's pray. Lord, you are close to the brokenhearted and a bruised reed you will not crush. And so Lord, wherever people are at listening today, I ask that you would meet with them in the sore spots of their heart. That you would reassure them that you can make everything beautiful in its time. That you are close to the brokenhearted. That you are near. Lord, that you comfort us and you mourn with us. You cry with us. But oh, how good it is to know that you hold us in that. And Lord, finally, you're going to wipe away every tear and make everything new. So would you help us to lean into that truth today? Would you help us to lean into that truth today? And in the midst of that, would you help us to be light and life and joy and truth to whoever we meet today that you bring to us for your honor and glory in your name. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, we're all in this together, right? We're going to encourage each other today. We are going to encourage others today. We are going to be light and life and joy and truth in the midst of whatever it is that we are experiencing. We give it to Jesus. We allow him the opportunity to mourn with us, right? To carry our grief, right? That's good news. That's good news. He's going to carry it. All right, my dear friends, <laughs> go enjoy some coffee, orange juice, some breakfast, or some lunch, or an evening tea. But today, like, share, go outside, and go help your community experience Christ. Bye.